Jacob, we know what sort of cook you are. By the looks of the bench, it's going to be crazy again. Yeah, I've tried to actually scale things back a bit, believe it or not. Gone for dessert today. I'm doing a blackberry chocolate brownie, the blackberry and elderflower sorbet, a uh, chocolate cylinder with a blackberry mascarpone mousse, uh, some elderflower jelly, a blackberry twill, um, and the spherified bramble cocktail. No way! You can't get all that done in 90 minutes. Uh, we'll see. What childhood memory inspired you to cook like this? End of every summer, I used to love going blackberry picking. We'd come back with a glut and not know what to do with them all. We'd make lots of crumble and jam. How many times have you actually made this dish as one dish? As one dish? Mm. Um, less than one. <laughs> less than one? Yeah. So never? Never. <laughs> Jacob is cooking us a plethora of blackberry and chocolate. What can go wrong? Well, probably everything. I can't see how we get it all done, but I've said that about Jacob every single time he's cooked in here. You have just ten minutes. Only ten minutes. Please, come up. I'm killing egg. That was a nightmare. But I've, I've not done them enough. Right, I'm going to do another one. You can do this in time. I've done this before. Yep. Five minutes, that's all you've got, is five minutes. Jane, you can't cook that in five minutes, can I you? I can. If I can get it in and it's whole, I can. Sixty seconds, come on, get them on a plate! Stop. You have to stop. Time is up. <laughs> Inspired by blackberry picking as a child, Jacob has cooked a blackberry and chocolate brownie a dark chocolate cylinder filled with blackberry mascarpone mousse, blackberry and elderflower sorbet, a blackberry twill, elderflower jelly, and a spherified bramble cocktail. It sort of reminds me of walking through brambles, sort of getting lost in them and trying to fight your way out. You know, it's, it's pretty wild, Jacob. Mm. There's loads of work on there to admire. You're obviously a really accomplished cook. I like the sphere because it tastes like I've got a little bit of light vodka with a blackberry flavour. I, re I really like that. The brownie, because it hasn't cooked, because it's too soft inside, you've had to put it on there and splodge it on. And, of course, that's spoilt the look of the plate. I really like it. I really like it. I like the fact that we've got textures and flavours of blackberry mixed in with textures and flavour of chocolate. Your blackberry and elderflower sorbet is fantastic. I don't mind the brownie, because actually I think that soft inside with crispy bit on the top is a good thing. I like the dish. I like the fun of it. Put the gloves on, put the goggles on. On dessert, Jane's next task is to make her milk ice cream using liquid nitrogen. Don't be afraid. <laughs> At minus 196 degrees Celsius, it freezes the milk mixture solid in a matter of seconds. Oh, Harry Potter. Never ever used anything like this before. I mean, you've seen me in the MasterChef kitchen, I don't even use a sous vide machine, so for me this is a bit of a, a, bit of a departure from the norm. She must then gently reheat and re-whip the ice cream to attain the perfect creamy consistency. I want to reach that perfect temperature okay. so it's smooth. And just like when an ice cream machine oh, does, okay. just a little bit faster. That's good. Milk and honey, I mean, it just doesn't give anything away at all. Who knows with that one? That's an exciting one. To be able to have a smooth transition and keep the guests excited all the way through and then finish 
really high up on a, on a dessert. It's a huge challenge. You look very calm and organized, Che. <laughs> we hope. I'll tell you what, I think this is the most complicated one out of the lot, this is. Just make sure, press it down so when it goes to the dining room, it, doesn't, it yeah. still looks like that. All right, Ian. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, Jane. Yeah. Well done. Thank you, chef. <laughs> Thank you very much. You feeling good? I am. Yes. Yeah. You did a really good job. Thank you. Thank That's you really very awesome. Much. If you'd told me at the beginning of this experience that I would have put something up like that, I don't think I would have believed you. I thought I would have been a mess on the floor. Jane has served milk and honey. A milk and bee pollen ice cream with a liquid honey centre. On a honey custard base, topped with shards of dehydrated milk foam. Awesome. <laughs> Sometimes all you got left is laughter. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you can do is just laugh at it. Beautiful honey, it's really aromatic. Lots going on in that. And then there's the salt as well, which just gives it another element. There's all these little explosions mm. of flavour in your mouth. Yeah, delicious. <laughs> It's a hard dish to pull off, to get all the temperatures right, to get all the layers right, to get the fragrances right, and, and to keep you, know, keep you excited all the way to the end, to the last bite. So she did very well, I think. It's the dessert that once you break into it, it just kind of keeps on giving more and more as you go along. Incredible. And what a finale of, of a, a three brilliant dishes. Oh, that is divine. Yeah. It's really, really very, very good, isn't it? And then that sort of sharpness, a little bit of salt around the outside as well. I mean, a huge amount of work for Jane. That's actually my favourite dish. That's a, that's a surprise. Hi. Jane, well done. What a great dish. Technically brilliant. Not something I'm sure you do every day. <laughs> what do you do every day, Jane? I'm a mum. I've got four children, so yeah, I've come straight out of cooking oh. at home. So today's been a doddle. Yeah. <laughs> a, mum, a mum and four children. Easy day, easy day. Incredible amount of technique gone into it for something that seems so, so simple. We thought it was delicious. That was fantastic. Well a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very emotional to walk in the room and get that feedback at the end. I, I thought I was going to cry, which would be mortifying in front of those chefs, wouldn't it? You've got 15 minutes for your dessert, but your brownie's done, right? Uh, yes. We have saved my favourite dessert until <laughs> last. Chocolate fudge brownie. You can't go wrong with that. That brownie needs to be soft on the inside. Your hazelnut praline, which adds crisp, adds texture, and that's what I think we're looking for. Sounds lovely. Oh, no. Okay. I'm a bit of a fan of toffee vodka. I think that all sounds heavenly, but it does need to be executed well because, it, again, it's quite a simple dish. You've got a minute. Go on. Well done. Thank well you. done. Today I've made chocolate fudge brownie with hazelnut praline and a toffee vodka cream, which I hope you enjoy. Thank Lovely. you. Thank, Thank you, you, Sonia. Thank you. I stand by my dishes. 
I think they taste really nice, my family think they taste nice, so fingers crossed. <laughs>the rogue amongst all this is a sorbet, a sorbet flavoured with fig leaves. How do you taste the, the leaf of a fig? I've never had before in my life. You've got just five minutes, guys. Just five minutes. Time's up. Stop, please. Charity director Alex has made almond macarons topped with smoked salmon and a yuzu wasabi and avocado cream. Parmesan shortbread topped with chestnut and porcini mushrooms. Sour cherry and pistachio brownie. Passion fruit mango and coconut nil foy and a lemon and ginger posset. The macaron with uh, yuzu was absolutely superb. I thought the texture was really good. It was hard, but it was chewy. There was a very intense flavor of yuzu, which came across really nicely and worked perfectly with your little salmon rosettes. I thought the porcini mushroom was great. I thought the pastry it was on was perfect. And I thought it had a really intense autumnal flavour, which was good. And I felt like I was going on a tour of the world. The milfoy is perfect. The pastry is still crisp. It's really thin. Love you made your own custard. And all the, the tropical fruit flavour running through it. Absolutely brilliant. Then I go into a light, just slightly sticky brownie that's, like, full of cocoa. It's just an absolute delight. Thank you. Honey cake with honeycomb and a used milk sorbet. I love honey. Who doesn't? But it's really sweet. What you then need there is that used milk to offer a balance to all that sweet honey. It might not be quite as complex as what some of the other guys are always doing, but for me, I'm really pushing myself with different techniques, flavours, and trying to make it exciting. So it's going to have 26 minutes and I'll check it. I'm not sure about these ovens because they're, they're all new. So normally it's about 26 minutes for the cake, but <laughs> might be a bit longer in there, I'm not sure. Pressing on with the first dessert, Thomas has got his used milk sorbet on to churn and he's made a honeycomb from caramelised sugar and bicarb of soda. Got to leave that for a good sort of hour and a half to, to cool down and I'm going to crumble it and put, put parts of it over the dish but he's noticed a problem with his honey cake. It's cooked too quickly around the outside and not cooked quick enough in the middle. I'm going to do it again. I'm not, I'm not panicking. It's just one of those annoying things that I could have done without, but I've got to get it right.
The spotlight is now on Thomas and his honey-inspired dessert with used milk sorbet. Here we are. Honeycomb and honey are uh, amongst my favorites. Put together with candied lavender, and I was completely sold. Sorbet the last thing? Sorbet is the last thing, yeah. A little bit soft. Go no quenelles. One quick, quick, quick sorbet. Might be like just to put a blob. We'll go for a blob. I think we'll get away with a blob. Ready to go, Thomas. Ready to go. Service guys, please. Everything on the dish is how I wanted it, how I envisaged it. Couldn't really go better for me. If those guys like it, whoopsie hey. <laughs> Thomas's Devon inspired pudding includes honey cake, used milk sorbet, honeycomb, lemon gel, and candied lavender. The cake well, it was delicious, it had just the right texture. And then actually coming out into lavender and, and lemon, being slightly rescued from the sweetness of the honey, I thought it was delicious.